Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominich and I am a trainer here at Pragmatic Works. If this is your first time visiting our YouTube channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below to stay up to date on all of the videos that we post. Today, I would like to talk to you about some of the M functions inside of the Power Query Editor that can be used to help you when you are setting up a date or calendar table. Now, the functions I'm talking about are going to be uh, kind of simple, but uh, they can be super useful. And so let's uh, stop talking about it here and let's head over to the Power BI desktop to see these in action. All right, so what we're gonna do here now from the Power BI desktop, we're gonna select Get Data, and then from the drop down there, we're gonna select Blank Query to launch the Power Query Editor. All right, so here in the formula bar, we're going to type in an equal sign here, and then we are gonna type in the formula list.dates. And this is going to allow us to create a list of dates. So we're gonna start by creating a single column of dates for the year 2022. So what we're going to do here is inside of the parameter here that we need to set up, we are going to begin with our start date. So to create a single column of dates for the year 2022, I'm going to enter the date January 1st, 2022. The count needs to be the uh, total count here or the uh, size of the date values here that we want. And for this, since we want the entire year, we are gonna type in 365, and we want that to increase by increments of one day. So that's the step field that we need to fill in here, our value of one here in the step field. You can also see here below, um, if you wanted to create a list of five values starting from New Year's Eve, um, incrementing by one day, you can see the M that you would need to input for this directly into the formula line if you would like. So we could also do that as well, but let's go ahead and use this parameter here, make it easy for us, hit invoke, and there we go. We have a list of dates for the year 2022, and we could scroll all the way down here and see, in fact, that is what we have. All right, let's go ahead now and convert this list to a table. So I'm gonna select the two table icon here in the top left corner then we aren't gonna change any of the options here, we're just gonna select okay. And let's go ahead and first rename our query, and so we'll call this our calendar uh, table here, or date table if you would rather, either is fine. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and change this data type here from an, any data type to the date data type. And we'll rename this to the, we'll say full year 2022, or calendar year 2022 would be another name that you could provide here. Now, what if we wanted to add a column here now that contained dates that were six months ahead or six months prior to the dates that we have listed here? And we wanted this to uh, be true for each row. We can do this here by adding in a custom column. So from the Add Column tab at the top, let's select Add Column and then that Custom Column icon. And let's go ahead and start first with uh, six months added to um, this full year ahead, or this full year 2022 column, excuse me. So if we wanted to have six months ahead, and so maybe we'll call this six months uh, into the future. And so for this here, what we are going to do is we are going to start with the function date dot, oh, and there they were there, add months. So we're going to select date dot add months. And we are going to need to insert the column here, our full year 2022 column. And you can see the little helper window popping up after we type that opening parentheses. After date.addMonth, we need to provide that specific column here. And then after we do that, we will type a comma, and then we will provide the number of months that we want it to show as a number. Okay, so let's go ahead here now, and we can make this very simple and select the column we want to insert here into our function. And then now we'll type a comma, 
and the number six. Now we need a closing parentheses here. We can see it's telling us that there are no errors detected. All right, let's select OK here now. All right, and you can see we can cross-reference our full year 2022 column. We now have a new column here showing us the dates six months ahead for this. All right, we wanna change this column here now to a date data type as well. Now, what if we wanted to have a column showing us a list of dates that was six months in the past or six months prior to our full year 2022 column? We can do that as well, and I'm gonna show you here how to do that here now. So under that Add Column tab, we'll select Custom Column again. And this time, let's go ahead and rename this column here, Six Months Prior. And we're going to set this up very similar to our previous function. We're going to select that date add months example, or function, excuse me. We're going to type in an opening parentheses here. And then now we need to insert that column again, full year 2022. We'll select insert. And now we'll type the comma. And instead of just typing six here, we type negative six to subtract months to go six months into the uh, past. We'll go ahead here now and select OK. And there we go. Now we can see six months prior to 2022, January 1st, 2022 is going to be July 1st, 2021. We'll do the same thing here now. We'll change this to a date data type here. So we can do this as well for days. So let's take a look at an example of that real quick. So from the Add Column ribbon, let's go to Custom Column here. And for this one here, let's say we wanted to take a look at dates maybe two weeks in advance. Or maybe we wanted to look at the previous work, that date in the previous work week. So let's just say we'll go with a week. We'll, we'll do this quick example. So for this one here, we'll say um, one week prior. And for this one here, we're going to do date.add again, but this time we want um, date add weeks. And then again, we are going to select, we're going to type our opening parentheses here, excuse me. And then we're going to type in, select our full year column, select insert, and then we're going to type our comma and negative one here. So we'll double check the syntax. It's saying it's correct. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and select OK. And there we go. Now we're looking at our dates here one week prior to our full year 2022 column. Make sure we always change our dates columns to a date data type here for this example. And so we could do the same thing here again now. If we wanted to do this with another example, let me go ahead and select custom column we can create another custom column doing date.add, and we can do this by quarters as well as years if we wanted to. We can do this by adding and subtracting to go either into the future or into the past. So there's lots of different use cases for this, so definitely go in, check this out, and see how this can be an advantage to you in creating those reports and things inside of Power BI. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you find this video helpful in setting up your date or calendar table inside of Power Query uh, and have some unique use cases for these functions here. Uh, let me know in the comments what M functions you would like to see a video done on, and maybe I'll just select one of those to do my video on next month. If you want more content from us here at Pragmatic Works, make sure to check out those links below in the description to sign up for our on-demand learning platform where you can find courses on Power Automate, Power Apps, uh, DAX, Azure as well, just to name a few. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.